Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm again recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today, Russ has a little walkthrough through a newer tool to allow you to analyze large logs, SpectX. SpectX is designed to essentially read in logs from diverse sources and allow you to browse and connect those logs with each other to, for example, investigate an incident. Now, a lot of this is similar to what you, for example, could do with Elasticsearch and Kibana and similar tools, but seems like this tool is a little bit easier to get started with, even though it's not entirely free, but instead sort of it has this freemium model, kind of like Splunk, where you get a limited amount of functionality for free. In this case, it's actually not the amount of data that's limited, but how many queries you may ask via their spec. X API each day, and that's limited to 300 queries. This may in particular be interesting, for example, for forensics investigation. I had uh, some cases where, for example, the free Splunk version didn't really work because you had to import quite a large number of logs to cover a particular incident. But uh, with this tool, it's not the amount of logs that you import, but the number of queries that you are actually going to request from the database. Interesting tool and take a look at Russ's write-up about it. And last month, Autodesk released an update for its FBX software development kit. Now, this is something that hasn't really gotten a lot of press. Autodesk and you know, AutoCAD, SolidWorks, this is fairly specialized software, so not a huge user base here, you would think. But turns out this FBX software development kit is actually a more generic library to sort of render 3D models. And turns out Microsoft included that library in Office. Now, the vulnerability here is uh, critical. It's a buffer overflow that can lead to code execution. And turns out this FBX software development kit is included in Microsoft Office. So today, Microsoft released a special update for Microsoft Office that fixes this vulnerability by updating the Autodesk library to the most recent version. First time I've seen this for uh, this Autodesk uh, library, possibly I missed some in the past. I remember there were uh, some similar issues with Oracle's outside in library. That's a library that does uh, document format conversions and it's also included in Office and lots and lots of other software. And uh, it had a number of vulnerabilities that of course then also had to be addressed in Microsoft's software. Now, talking about including third-party libraries and some of the unintended consequences, some interesting issues with the Stripe JavaScript library. Stripe, a payment provider, is often used particularly by smaller websites to collect credit card payments. They make it pretty easy. All you have to do is include some JavaScript on your site and all the actual credit card processing is done by Stripe. So credit cards never hit your website, which is really neat because now you don't have to worry about PCI and similar issues. But of course, including a lot of JavaScript that you essentially can't review has some risks with it. And they're discussed in a recent blog post. And what's essentially happening if you're including the Stripe JavaScript library is that Stripe is monitoring users' behavior on your site. Now, this is actually typical kind of for fraud protection, for example, to look at things like mouse movements and such to make sure that you're dealing with a human, kind of like the I'm not a robot checkbox that you see with a recapture. Stripe also commented saying that yes, you know, that's what it's all about. 
couple of things that you can do here and probably should do. Uh, first of all, you don't really need to include this uh, JavaScript on every single page. Of course, if you have a single page application, maybe it's worthwhile to sort of put the checkout process or so on a different page and only that page then requires the Stripe JavaScript library or you do it just without any JavaScript library and send the user over to Stripe checkout. That is actually a lot simpler. Of course, uh, then you have less control over the actual checkout process. But well, I can let you go without at least one more security tool that uh, had some pretty big flaws, IBM's Data Risk Manager, three critical severity vulnerabilities and one high impact bug were disclosed by Petro Rebiero from Agile Information Security, authentication bypass, command injection, insecure default password, and an arbitrary file download vulnerability. Sounds like your usual trifecta here, or four factor, I guess, uh, for critical vulnerabilities in a typical security product. That's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.